once I was in, they folded it down and screwed it up, screwed it in, that was it. Even the Spitfire pilots had <laughs> yeah. sliding canopy. Sliding canopy, that's right. Yeah, there was no way of getting out of this, no. I must have been crazy when we did it. <laughs> the car was in the shop and uh, Malcolm was making various observations. Uh, Jack Emerson was looking at the engine side. Bob Knight was looking at the tyre position and the suspension. And uh, this was probably one of the main key features of the um, of preparing the car. Uh, as you can see, it was panelled over the passenger side was completely filled in, yeah. panelled. Then we had this uh, hinge section here, and the bubble was put in this metal panel. And the whole idea is, you see, is once I'm in the car and the door's closed, they bring the bubble over the top and uh, it's then located and fixed from outside to secure it. Uh, we uh, Didn't you think when you first saw it, no, I don't want to be screwed into it? Well, no, it's one of these uh, things you look at it and you think, should I do it or shouldn't I? Yeah. And always, I was always one for trying things out experimentally. I thought, well, with it, 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 it could work. Let's try it, and that, that's all, that's all you can do. Uh, until you've done it, you don't know. Yes, it could have backfired on us. You know, it could, could have caused all sorts of problems. But uh, fortunately, it didn't. You know, when we got the bubbles, uh, the uh, I sat in the car and they dropped the bubble on. Yes. And it was on top of my head, and it was about three inches from the body. Oh, goodness. So uh, the joke, it was a big joke at the time, but uh, it worked. They took the wobble off, and then Haynes said to the fitter, take the seat out. And I looked at him, and he said, I said, what are you doing? He said, just sit on, just sit in the car. I said, oh, I'm not sitting on the floor. And I was, uh, what did he so say? He said, reaction? just get in and let's try it. So I sat in, and they put the wobble on. And of course it met the body. Yes. I got about three inches in, right. and you're not allowed to you're not allowed to have any fuel in the tank when you arrive to do the runs. The shell people bring their uh, van with the fuel in, yes. and it's got to be ordinary pump fuel that anybody can buy at the uh, at the uh, garages. Yeah. So they put as much as we want in. And once they put the fuel in, they clip the tank and seal it with a lead seal. That's it. Then you can do your maximum runs. We've we finished the whole runs by half past eight in the morning because we got up there at half past six. The idea being that if we could have got, uh, we we assumed there'd be no wind and the moisture. We, you get this low mist, yeah. early morning mist, and, and Jack Emerson said, "We you need that low wind. If we can get the the damp air going into the carburetors, that'll help a lot." Yeah. And we had, we got this very low ground mist, you could see it as we approached. We got up there about up at six in the morning. Uh, they closed the five mile, you see. So you have yes. two mile run in, measured mile, and two mile out. You have to turn around, and you have to do the run back within five minutes to make it a record. Was that yeah. five minutes? Well, it's to stop you having the bonnet up and tweaking and yes. the run back. You're not allowed to touch it, you see. So then you do your run back and they take the mean of the two runs, yes. which in this case, uh, the best one way was 174. Grief. But the mean, when we turned the other way, it worked out 174.2. Uh, 172.4, uh, so. What was your first reaction when you headed off down the motorway towards Ostend? Yeah, well, I. Uh, as I said, they close five miles, so you have two mile run in, measured mile and two mile out, turn around and come back. And it had to be done it's, within? You have to do it within, you turn around, it must be within five minutes. Right. Um, so what, you, what I did, I got to the uh, end of the five miles, started my first run down. Having warmed it up, of course, it was, I'd got all the temperatures right, the oil pressure was good. 40, uh, showing 45, 50. Uh, water temperature, I got up to 70. Got it nice and hot and warmed up, and so I now start my run. And uh, of course, you're going flat all the time with the throttle. 
and every time I was getting up to about five, six, five, eight change, I'm now in top gear, heading down towards the uh, measured mile. How steady was it? And uh, well, it, 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 there was a little bit of side movement, and, and the steering occasionally went a bit light. So I, I realised there was probably a, a little bit of lift going, but. Uh, but it wasn't too bad. He, uh, the, the, I think the thing was looking through this Perspex bubble, you see you've got a contour that way and that way. Yes. So everything looked diminished in size. So what I, I could see a bit of movement on the bonnet and that, I could see it in a very different view from what people could see outside. Yes. You know. So to me it was moving, it looked a bit moving, but to people outside they said it. They said the car was really moving across the um, uh, the road, uh, but anyway, I'll say you accelerate through the gears. I got in top. I'm now pulling about five, five eight, and way way ahead, I can see the checkered board where the measured mile is. I'm now pulling what what Jack Emerson said: don't go above five eight revs. What was that? What was five eight? Five eight in RPMs. That was doing around about the 150 or 60-ish, yeah. And then by the time I reached the... I was going to back off and I thought, uh, no, I'll leave it. So I left it, it went up to uh, six, 60 when I hit the checkered board. And uh, it, it was running beautiful. So I went through the measured mile and it pulled 60 all the way through. I knew that was pretty quick, but I didn't know really how quick it was at the time. So then I turned round, uh, Dunlop Mac, the tyre man, yeah, I remember. That you, he was a great tyre man, he was there to check the tyres, make sure the canvas hadn't come through this, uh, cutting the tyre tread down. I couldn't speak to him at all because this was all fixed, so I looked out and he just put his thumbs up for me to do the yeah, run back. Yeah. So. Again, I uh, did the run back, two mile running in. Again, I was then, by the time I got to the checkered board, I again was pulling 6.2, 6.3. So uh, I finished the run, turned around and come down the other side and there was the, uh, uh, all the press people and the, and the timekeepers and everybody. They're all crowded round, so I just stopped the car, they undone the bubble, throw it back like this. I then, pull myself out and sit on the, on there. Right. Uh, nobody's smiling, nobody's talking, and nobody says a word. And I'm thinking, you know, what, what's going on? Lofty's standing in front of the car with his arms folded. And he, <coughs> he just looked at me and said, uh, is there a problem with the car, Norman? I said, no, I said, it uh, seems perfectly all right. He said, well, you're not very quick. I said, uh, what do you mean, not quick? I said, I'm pulling six, six, two, six, three. He said, you can't be. He said, um, there must be something wrong with the rev counter. He said, you're not as quick as you were when you was over in April. I said, I can't believe that. And then he slowly walked from there around here. The green, and I was sitting there and he put his arms around me, give me a big hug and he said, you buggy, you know what you've done? I said, no, he said, 172.4. He said, you've shattered it. And that, then all the crowd cheered, you yeah, see, right. but they, they played this on me, you know, don't let it, don't, don't show any emotion at all, keep, keep calm keep about it. Keep him guessing, right? Keep him guessing. And that was it, you know. Um, so in all, it's, it still holds the record now, you yes. see. Of course, what happened, you see, the, uh, after I'd done the, uh, these 172 miles of speed, you've got to remember, you see, the, the other side of the road, uh, where the they put the traffic two-way, all these, pe all these traffic uh, uh, stops, the people get, <coughs> the people who got out, climbed over the little grass centre, yeah. and they all stood on the side of the road. And of course, with the car, as they say, they could see it moving, the, um, the police and uh, the Automobile Club of Belgium said, whoa, this is too dangerous now, so they stopped it. No more yeah. uh, records on the job. So I was the last one to uh, do it, you know. After we did this uh, uh, final Jebek one, uh, we got back to the hotel and uh, Lofty said, I'd better ring the old man and let him know what's happened. 
So we got through to Wappenbury, that's where he lived. And, uh, and then the old man came on and uh, Lofty said, oh, uh, Lofty England here, he said, no, ring you from Javik. He said, just to let you know, he said, Norman's uh, had a wonderful day. He said, he shattered the record and all this, told him the speed. And uh, he, he said, put Dewey's on. So he, Lofty gave me the phone and um, I said hello, good morning, sir. And he said, well done, Dewey. He said, uh, I told you, I told you you could do it, you know, and all this. I said, yeah, I said, I've had a good run, thank you. He said, I've told uh, Lofty you can go into Brussels tonight um, and have a little bit of a party. He said, but don't forget, Dewey, champagne's very expensive. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Again, watching the pennies.